Hey y'all, uh, just wanted to go through this lab with those of you who are either absent or um, for some reason got behind on the lab. So first of all, it started off, um, we have two sheets. One is posted in Google Classroom from Friday. The other one's posted from Google Classroom from yesterday. Um, so we started off like this. It says Slinky Wave Lab. A Slinky is an excellent device for creating and studying waves. A Slinky can easily demonstrate the two basic types of waves, longitudinal and transverse. Um, in your own words, define the following terms. Frequency. So you can define frequency as how many waves pass a point in a given amount of time. How many waves pass a point in a given amount of time. Wavelength can easily be described as the length of the wave. And amplitude is the size or the strength of the wave. So that's just those words defined in our own terms. So now we're going to start with this. It says you and your lab partner, or my left hand, <laughs> Um, should hold opposite ends of the spring and stretch it out the length of the tabletop. Now, I can't do that because I am working by myself, but you get the idea. Um, all right. And then it says the spring should be tight, but careful not to exceed the elastic limit. So don't stretch it so much you're going to ruin the slinky. Um, and don't let go of one. That ends because, especially if you stretch a lot, you can hit somebody and hurt them. All right. Have one person give the end of a spring a few sideways shakes and observe. Is this a transverse or longitudinal wave? Now remember, transverse has the letter S in it. So you can remember that, uh, that it has a letter S in it, that it makes a shape kind of like an S, right? It wiggles back and forth. So this is a transverse wave. What's the disturbance that causes the transverse wave? Well, my hand. My hand is making a motion that's causing the medium, in this case the slinky, to be disturbed. So my hand is the disturbance. All right, uh, describe the wave. Which direction does the wave appear to be traveling? You could say left to right or right to left or back and forth. And if I do this, you can see that it's just traveling back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. All right, and then what happens when it reaches your partner's end? Or in this case, this hand, let's see what happens. It bounces back. It bounces back, all right. And then finally, what's the direction of the medium? Now this is easiest to see if I were to hold it up like this. And I want you to watch this coil right here. Okay, watch that and see what happens to that. Did you miss the coil? It's the one that's right there. Anyway, watch the coils and pretend you're watching just one and see what happens to it as the transverse wave passes through. Okay, what happens to the coils? The medium is just moving up and down as the wave goes back and forth. So I could write that out by saying it's going up and down, or it's going perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So what happens to the medium? The medium moves in the opposite way that the energy is moving. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and flip that page over, and it's going to ask you pretty much the same things, but this time with a longitudinal wave. So you can pinch a group of coils like this. It's kind of hard to do by yourself, but you can pinch a group of coils like this and let it go. And you can see the wave travel, so I'm going to show you that again. Pinch the coils again, let it go, and you can see the wave travel. Is this a transversal longitudinal? Well, it's a long wave. It's a longitudinal wave, right? So that's the longitudinal wave. You can also do it just by shaking it in the direction um, of the medium as well. What's the disturbance that triggers the wave? Same thing. It's my hand. It's the motion of my hand that's disturbing the medium or the pinching of the coils. All right. And then which direction does the wave appear to be traveling? Again, back and forth, or left to right, or right to left. It's going back and forth. Now here's where it gets a little different. Oh, I'm sorry, what happens when it reaches your partner's hand? Again, bounces back, and you can see that that wave bounces back. And you could be detailed and say it bounces back with less strength, or it bounces back and doesn't seem to, uh, you know, be quite as big of a wave or whatever, but just it bounces back. Scientifically, we call that a reflection, okay? It reflects. Um, the next one says, what's the direction of the medium? And again, this is where it gets a little different. So if again, you can kind of watch this medium right here, what happens to it? First of all, it's moving way over to one side, and as I let it go, it's moving back and forth. So in a transverse wave, the first one we looked at, as the medium was going this way, or excuse me, as the energy was going, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the medium was going up and down, it was going opposite. 
in a longitudinal wave, you're looking at the medium, in this case the slinky, is moving in the same direction as the wave. So the medium, if you look at that coil right there in the middle, watch it. So it's moving parallel to the energy. So if the wave goes back and forth, so does each little coil. Now that doesn't mean that it goes the entire length of it or anything, but if you were to watch this coil right here in the middle, and as the wave passes through, it's going back and forth. Right? Whereas the transverse wave, it was going opposite. All right. So I would answer that by saying the direction of the medium is the same direction as the, as the wave. Or I would just say back and forth, back and forth, or left to right, left to right. And then to model the wave, we've done this on the board quite a few times, but you're going to draw this out. You're going you're gonna to draw out a transverse wave that looks like this. You're going to draw out a longitudinal wave. And how I draw it is I kind of draw it like a slinky. I do coil, 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 close together, and then stretch coils, and then coil, 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 coil again, close together. Um, and then you're going to label that uh, transverse wave with the crest being at the top, the trough being at the bottom, and the longitudinal wave where the tight together coils are the compression and the far apart coils are the rarefaction. All right? So that's the first half. That's phase one. Next, woo, spill my coffee. <laughs> Next one, you're going to have your page that looks like this, and it's going to ask you questions about the characteristics of waves. So the first one were the types of waves and um, the parts of the wave, and now we're looking at the characteristics. So the first one we're looking at is amplitude. And again, if you remember how you defined it in our own words, amplitude is simply the strength or the size of the wave. So you're going to have your partner hold your slinky, and you're going to make um, one single burst of a transverse wave. And you're going to record your observations. I could say that, you know, it traveled from one side to the other. I'm going to make a smaller amplitude transverse wave. Hmm. You could say it didn't bounce back as much. Or the amplitude, the strength of the wave seemed to decrease as it moved from my disturbance to my hand. Okay, or to my partner. Number two, have your partner hold a slinky and not move their hand. Send one larger amplitude and record your observations. Now remember, as we're using our observations, we can use all of our senses, right? So what do we see? What do we hear? What do we taste? No, we don't want to lick the slinky. What do we smell? We're not going to smell the slinky. But what do we feel? So let's see. What do we see? Well, as we make a bigger disturbance, we see a bigger wave. What do we hear? It's louder than this one. And what do we feel? And you could ask your partner, what do you feel when the wave hits your hand? And your partner could say, well, it feels like I, I shook more with the bigger wave, right? Or it, it, you know, it hit my arm because it was so big. It didn't only hit my hand, it hit my arm as well. So describe what you did with your hand as you made the bigger amplitudes. Well, the smaller amplitude, I barely moved my hand. Bigger amplitude, I moved it more. It's that, it's that simple. All right, and then again, have your partner describe the difference that they felt with a small and a larger transverse wave at their hand. And then you're gonna go ahead and draw a small amplitude wave and a big amplitude wave. Um, and then it goes on to say, let's see, da, 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 da. okay. And then finally, discuss. Don't do or write, just discuss with your partners. How would you do the same experiment with longitudinal wave? Let's do it. Small amplitude longitudinal wave. Large amplitude longitudinal wave. And again, you can hear the difference. You can see the difference. And if I'm gonna grab my coils, I would grab fewer to make a smaller amplitude longitudinal wave, and I would grab much more and stretch it much more to get a larger amplitude longitudinal wave. And we can measure the amplitude by how close our medium is pressed together as that wave goes through. All right, see, it's easier to draw big transverse, small transverse, as opposed to longitudinal, but you would, you would draw it with the coil squished more closely together. That's amplitude. On the back, you're looking at frequency and wavelength. So you're going to do first shake one end of the slinky back and forth slowly at a constant rate. And you can describe or draw the transverse wave. 
the slower I go, I might have one wave, right? So I might draw this just like one arc or maybe two arcs because it's going slowly. Now I'm gonna shake the end very quickly and describe or draw the resulting wave. Well, in my same distance that I'm holding my hands apart, instead of just being one wave, I can see two or three or even four individual waves in that same amount of space. So what happens to the frequency? You're gonna increase the frequency, you're faster you disturb it, right? So the faster we disturb it, it's gonna have a higher resulting frequency. What happens to the wavelength? Well, let's watch it. As I'm going slowly, my wavelength is pretty long. If I go a little bit faster, now I have two waves where I used to have one. A little bit faster than that, I'll have three waves where I used to have one. Faster than that, I'll have four or five waves. So the faster my frequency, the shorter my wavelength. Does that make sense? Because if I'm moving it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I'm sending smaller waves. Not smaller strength like amplitude, but shorter waves. So as I increase the frequency, I'm decreasing the wavelength. And that's my relationship. That's my answer number five. The relationship between wavelength and frequency. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and draw that. And I would draw a high frequency by going up and down, up and down, up and down really fast. And at a lower frequency, I would just draw fewer waves in that same amount of space. And then I would discuss that. How would I do that with a longitudinal wave? Well, I would move it in bursts the same way. Slow frequency, high frequency. Slow frequency, high frequency. And if you could freeze that, you would see that in those high frequency, you're gonna have more compressions in the same amount of space with a higher frequency. Same relationship, higher frequency, smaller wavelengths, all right? And that's pretty much um, our entire lab. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, of course, um, you can send me a chat or you can um, pop into office hours at two o'clock. And with that, friends, I'll see you later.